Union of Nigeria. <laughs> the speaker is happily married and has an adorable princess. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in welcoming Toastmaster Sally Uzakari to the lecture. Good evening, Toastmasters and guests. So today, we're having a presentation on something very interesting, and I know that you would love to share with your brothers and sisters or your business partners. I want to enlighten us on what overtime cargo is. Those that are into, into importation, or you know somebody that's into importation, please, at the end of my speech, there will be a question and answer session. So, listen. What is overtime cargo? Does anybody have an idea what overtime cargo is? Do we know what a cargo is? Then, okay, want to try? <laughs> okay, yes, please. Oh, good. So you just match it together. Let's give him a round of applause. Any cargo, a cargo is a container which has been imported into the country, whether a container or on pallets, an item that has been in, imported, maybe has a very good storage unit that has been imported into a large sum, is called a cargo. Then over time, it has stayed over its time. So here we have the aim of this presentation is to enlighten and acquaint members and guests on what the time cargo is all about and the relevant laws empowering Nigerian custom service because they are the ones that are in charge of all overtime powers. They are the ones that are in charge of importation. So I want to enlighten us in this light. Yes, you guys. Overtime powers are goods, are goods that have spent more than the required period allowed by law for the purpose of clearing and taking delivery. The dwelling period is 28 days. This is where a lot of people get it wrong. Once you import your containers through the seaports, or you bring in cargoes through the land borders, or you bring in where the airplanes, air freight, once it lands in Nigeria, you have only 28 days by law to clear your cargo out of the port. Anything after that, it can be, it will be declared as an overtime cargo by law, and then customs will take possession. There is no how you can clear it, or less, as we go further, I'll explain. Okay. okay, so this is a vessel bringing containers, discharging cargoes. These are the containers, so they have a view of practical view, and then let's go. This is a cargo airplane. It doesn't have passengers. Some of these, like the presidential room fleet, most of the cars for the president or Lamborghini, if you're importing them, they mostly come by air freight. They come by this kind of cargo planes. They are very big, bigger than this, uh, the whole of this uh, mall. They are very, very massive. So some of them, they take cargo, they, they take containers. Some of them fly containers. So we can fly 20 cars, 30 cars because of the worth of the cars. We don't want them to come by sea because of risk. Okay, next one. On the expiration of the dwelling period, don't forget 28 days, the scheduled officer at the Custom Processing Center, that's the CPC, shall prepare a summary of the frequency on a form which will show all outstanding items for which no single goods declaration has been declared. A single goods declaration is a form where you declare what you have brought in for the purpose of payment of duty. So that's what a single form C2 2010 is a control document. That's why I don't even have it, but I would have shown you anyway. So uh, you need to declare your invitation, just like when you are opening form M well, with the CBN, you declare you show your intent or one you are bringing in before they issue it from M to you. 
So likewise with customs, after you have done all those procedures, before you take delivery of your cargo, you have to pay duty. Then you will declare yourself self-declaration. That is why we have a single goods declaration form. So this form will be collated and any discrepancy for those that have not captured already, it shows that your goods are still in the port and then you have not captured. So the officer there will go on order to it is also to issue an unclaimed cargo list. He will tally, okay, he will tally everything in a list that you will forward to this uh, okay, to this basis. You forward one to the original shippers. The two tickets will be sent to the government warehouse. We have a government warehouse where all this things shall be shipped and kept. Then the two tickets will be sent to Manifest City, where they take tally of inventories of things that come in and go out. So there are certain laws that empower the Nigerian Customs Service to act. The Constitution has given them under this laws the law to Okay, we have section 31 of SEMA Cap C45, Law of Federal Public of Nigeria 2004. The SEMA is Customs Exercise and Management Act. It's an act that was signed, amended in 2004. So these are the relevant sections that empowers customs officers to declare your cargo as an overtime cargo. Okay, a new SEMA was just signed before the Paris administration just ended. So, but we are yet to implement it. So, the other one still suffice. After they have finished all and it has been gazetted, we can start the information. Reasons. There are, there are certain reasons that lead to abandonment of cargoes in the seaports. But are not limited to loss of transport documents. Some people misplace their documents and there's no how they can go back and claim it. Unfortunately, you had done the documentation from overseas till here and you misplace your, your documents. If you don't know how to go about it, after your 28 dwelling, your 28 days dwelling period, you haven't gotten and you haven't declared anything, it shall be declared as an overtime. The death of an importer or an agent. Maybe in the process before the before the containers arrive or the airplane or the cargo arrives in Nigeria, the importer suddenly dies and then there's nobody to continue with the process. So it enters, it, uh, it oversees the 28th wedding period and then it enters overtime cargo. Then tumorage. Maybe your container has landed and then you don't have enough funds. And then it passes the 28 days and, they are, and the shippers or the handlers of the terminal, they charge you because they start charging you immediately after, I, I think it's one week, they start charging you for keeping your container with them. So after one week, maybe the money accumulates and then you can bear the cost of clearing your container and then clearing the money. So the money is also a cost for that. Okay, conflict between other and internet. So there can be conflict between the two of them and then the importer and the, the agent might run away with the documents and it will enter, okay. Then the disposal of overtime cargo. I know this is where you would be very interested in. So there are certain ways um, of disposing of overtime cargo. We conduct 100% physical examination on the cargoes that have been declared over time. After we conduct inspection and examination of those cargoes, then the list is taken to a competent court of law that will condemn those containers, allowing us to auction them out. They have to be condemned before we auction them out. Okay. Then, after they are condemned, and we have examined them, taken pictures, taken stock, then we will take them to the Gazette Office of the Federal Republic of Nigeria for them to be gazetted. Okay, next. Then it will be, there will be publication in at least three national dailies for everybody to see that this container has been condemned, gazetted, and is now out, ready for auction. So, then the sale and auction of goods. At this period, we have the full right and everything have taken custody and by law we can now 
auction all these containers and remit what is left of it, or of it to the Federation account. Okay, this is a container we mentioned for examination. This is when it is open for examination. Okay, in conclusion, I hope you listen to me. In conclusion, over time, how this can be found at either sea, airport, or land borders. The law of at C45, most of the federal of Nigeria, it gives us some access to powers to declare goods over time at the expiration of the early period of 28 days. After they discharge all the powers on you, on board in the ship, aircraft prepared. Okay, these are my references you can make for that. So, thank you for your attention. Questions and answer session. Thank you. Quickly, you know, on, on I have 15 to 20 minutes, but on the agenda it says uh, 10 minutes. So I hope you can grace me two two minutes for question and answers. Any questions? Yes, please. Good evening. Okay. What is up on my keys? Thank you very much. Okay. You talked about too much. And any more questions? So let, let, let me take all the questions quickly so then I give my answers because of time. Okay. You asked on Jumorage majorly. When it starts, yeah? Okay. Okay, and how long? Okay. Okay, yes, please. Yes, uh, I want to. So, can I see them? Of course, of course. Okay. Yes, uh, I actually want to find out sometimes a vessel has a problem on the sea. Yes. And uh, maybe certain things will go wrong, especially if it was not handled properly. Yes. At another spot, because sometimes the vessel has to be for the final spot. Exactly. So, when the goods are there, because I have someone who has experience. Yes. Any other question? Just the last one, please. Um, you mentioned about um, at some point you 
lost that difference. Yes. Yes. But I want you to still explain further if there is um, in the situation where you have lost the document, you don't, you don't have uh, any means of getting it back in. So don't the custom, the custom service, doesn't they have uh, don't they have uh, database, records, or database or any other option like uh, the person bringing uh, a feeder kit or something for you to bring on your cargo. So that means you have lost your cargo. You have custom service. You have lost document. So are we good? Is that's all the questions? Yeah, okay. So the first question was on Domori on Domori. Uh when it starts and you added when it ends. And then you maybe I have to check the slide to see the last part I I did. So on Domorage, I I am not really certain, I think, but it's, it starts after a week. Once your container land, you have a week grace period before your demerit starts counting. And then the demerit is not charged by customs, it's charged by the terminal operators. These are private people that take charge of terminals. During the Obasanjo regime, he, he uh, privatized all the terminals. The Nigerian terminals at the seaport. So we have AP Mola, we have um, PTML, we have terminal, we have Roro, we have so many terminals where they keep these towers. But for us, we have like a Kurudu bonded terminal. It belongs to the government. We just stack uh, containers that have stayed over time there. We don't keep them for safeguard or you come there and you pay your, term your terminal charge. So the Dumorit is charged by the terminal operators who are private investors. That's one. And then your dumorage does not stop counting. Even if it's 10 years, your dumorage continue, continues to count. But what happens is that the beauty of the 28 days dwelling period is that once customs declares your cargo as overtime cargo, and then you are lucky, we carry it from the terminal operators to our bonded terminal. You don't pay demerge. Do you understand? Do you understand? Okay. When the cargo is at the bonded terminal, you continue paying demerge as long as it's not moved, evacuated by customs to our bonded terminal. Once it's, it's still in the hands of the private investors, those that own the on the, uh, the private terminals, bonded terminals at the seaport. You continue paying dumorage. They continue to count your dumorage. You have to go and negotiate dumorage with them when, when, when you eventually want to clear your goods. But once we take stock of it, once, once we take stock of it after 28 days, if you're lucky, or sometimes a month or two months, and then we take stock, and then we, we, we send our enforcement unit to go and evacuate all the containers to decondest the port. Then we move them to our Ikorudu bonded terminal, that's for the Eagles. So once it's there, it's just the landing fee, which is by the old law, is 500 naira per day. So, but Dumaj runs into 300,000 or 400,000 per day, depending on how long it is. Yes, yes. So Dumaj does not stop if it's with the private private handlers. But when it's with customs, your domerage stops only the landing charges. Okay. So for vandalized container, who has a lot? Okay, you. Okay. So you said that she was bringing in her container and something happened along the way on the sea. So the 28 days do not start counting until your container, on, until the vessel births in Nigeria. And then your container has been uploaded from the vessel and dropped at the bonded terminal. That is when the 28 days starts to count. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. The issue was that you vandalized. Yes, I want to come to that period. I, I wanted you to be clear about this point. The first part. Then the, the, the vandalized uh, container. It is in the custody of the private uh, 
uh, handlers, the terminal operators, you can sue them. Even customs, you can sue customs. But it is not that we have what we call the trader zone and the customs zone. So it is still in the trader zone because we have not taken charge and you have not paid your duty. Do you understand? So you can sue them for vandalizing your container. And, and, and in fact, you cannot clear that container because it has been vandalized. We won't go and clear it. You have to go to court and tell us that, okay, you dropped your goods and it was vandalized. The court will have to uh, agree to that statement. Our lawyers will now confirm who vandalized it, who removed it, before we can even go and examine it and then allow you to pay duty on what is left inside the container. So at this point that your container was vandalized, you are to sue the terminal operators for allowing your containers to be vandalized because you have indemnity. Yes. So uh, the last question was uh, loss of documents and the remedy for that. Yes. So actually, the loss of documents, if it's just peripheral documents, because we have e-manifest where your bill of ladings come electronically, if it's just the bill, bill of ladings that you have lost, we can get it on the system, actually. Then you have to bring documents that will support that you are the true owner of that shipment. But if you cannot prove beyond the reasonable doubt that you are the true owner, you have lost that container. And then all hope is not lost. Even when your container is uh, condemned by law and is about to be auctioned, there's what we call the listing and, and clearance. But well, because of time, maybe you will meet me some other time to digest this topic much, much better. Thank you so much. Toastmaster.